Okay. So first, so. Sure, sure. Okay. Well, Chris, thank you so much for accepting my invite. Um, and oh. very quickly at that too. So we've known each other since college. Um, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yes. Uh, we, yeah. We even started a club. Well, like we were all starting a club, or whatever, with our colleagues back then. That's right. Yeah. Um, why don't you introduce yourself and where you're at right now? Sure. So if everyone who is tuning in, uh, my name is Chris. Um, I'm a, a, gra a second grad student who's at, at Boston right now, who is uh, doing a second master's for a, uh, oral health sciences. Um, the reason why I'm doing that is because I applied to dental school for my first master's back in 20, 2020 when I graduated. But unfortunately, I got denied on those. And then I have this saying that I need to enhance my science even more further. Uh, so that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, it's a one year uh, degree. So hopefully I'll be able to apply again next year and then hopefully get into dental school later on. That's interesting. So you did your master's um, and then they said it wasn't, there wasn't enough science yeah. in it? Yeah, because most, cause if a master of public health is mostly not too much science, but then you're doing literature review research, but you're also doing field research. But to them, they feel like it's not enough because they want to see how rigorous you can handle science courses. Because when I got from Cal State Florida, um, I was a double major, so I was a business administration in health science. Uh, even though I did the, the prereqs before I transferred to Cal State Florida, um, they wanted, because I, my, my, my prereqs were okay, but they're not the greatest. So I had to, okay. before entering my master's, I also did some um, we're, we're taking on the sciences and I did improve those, but again, they wanted to see more, um, I guess more harder sciences just to see quite handle it. Wow. I, yeah. I definitely was not expecting that because yeah, I would think that you're, you're above other people since you're, you were a double major, right? You're a yeah. business <laughs> and also health science. Yeah. Yeah. And then I did a master's in dental public, which is more specialized in the master's. Right. Uh, when I applied for that, I was like, no, you need to enhance your, your, your science courses. And so I said, okay, okay, that's fine. <laughs> I'll figure a way. And then I was able to find this program, just applied. And then even the, um, the advisor was telling me, you have a master's in dental public, you still didn't get into that? So I'm like, yeah. So, that is super surprising, yeah. So the reason why is because it's so competitive in dental school now. Um, unfortunately, I've been seeing a trend now, a lot of medical students, so um, of med pre-meds who can't even get into medical school now are changing, going to dentistry. So that kind of pisses me off because, you know, now that they're, that they're going to that route and then someone mm -hmm. who really wants to get into dentistry, you know, you know, and they're getting in, I'm not I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. So it irritates me a lot. And then, um, and I even hear stories about those who are already in their third year there. And then they said they don't want to do it anymore. And then they just drop it. It's all like, what the, f you know, what the fudge? <laughs> yeah, so it's getting crazier, uh, the competition for like dental school. Yeah. Wow. So I think it's because, so everyone starts in college thinking, I want to become a doctor. And none of them understand what it means to become a doctor. So yeah. when they're getting closer and closer, they realize, oh, I'm not prepared for that. What other mm -hmm. alternatives can I do? So I would still be in the field in fall. So what you're aware for. Uh, <laughs> and, um, <laughs> um, okay. So we, we met in college and so you, you did your master's and now you're doing another master's and you're still pursuing dental school. Yeah. Is that a passion yeah. or how is, is that just a passion? Because for me, I feel like finance wise, it doesn't make sense anymore. Right. Right. So some people usually, um, many people go, well, especially in my, in that route, particular special dentistry at their own purpose. So of course you're not going there for the money, right? Hopefully not. Um, but for me, it's, it's a sense of purpose for me to give my contribution to society. Okay. okay. So when originally, like, you know, so I'm Filipino, so if people don't know I'm Filipino. Um, and uh, my, I'm growing up, my mother is also in full, is a nurse. So she's a nurse supervisor uh, uh, working in a, um, a, uh, a facility where you have inbounding um, 
they step down of like step down um, ER trauma, and they usually just put them there. Um, so she's she she works there like sixteen hours uh, all, most most of the day. So she mm-hmm. works a lot. Um, and when I see her paycheck, boy, she gets she gets paid a lot. Uh, so she always yeah. encouraged me to become a nurse early on when I was starting high school. So mm-hmm. she dragged me to her her job to see if if I want to pursue a nursing. Um, unfortunately, after going through all of those. It was just wasn't for me. I just didn't like the environment around that area because people were right. sick, people were dying, um, people maybe have cancer, and their people are like are screaming around their left and right. It wasn't for me. So what I did is that I took the, the initiative to go around different uh, uh, professions for doctorates, you know, optometry, podiatry, veterinary, pharmacy, um, mm-hmm. physical therapy. I went around and did uh, like at least two weeks of uh, just shadowing around them. And then um, after evaluating all of them, I decided which one would be more fulfilling. And what I saw was that dentistry was something that, that was very fulfilling to me because, first of all, you're not killing the patient in dentistry. Um, if you make a mistake, it's still fixable. Um, right. But and then but you have the position that if so, someone is in pain or that needs to be fixed, you can fix that instantly within a few hours. And to me, that feels like Oh, that's something that makes me probably makes me very happy, but also gives me a contribution to society that I'm I'm able to help that that individual. Okay. Yeah. So you you did have a string a strong sense of purpose when since I met you back in college mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. to now. So you definitely carry that over. Yeah. But at the time did... club, we quit when we played a club, I wanted to be the leader to and stick everyone to make me go for that, you know. And, yeah. Uh, so from then to now, which is what is it's been eight, nine, ten years. Um, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, what have you been up to besides, of course, going to school? Um, were you working at the same time? Yeah. So when I graduated, when my first master's at 2020, um, unfortunately, I lost my father because of the, the pandemic oh. was starting. Um, oh, but I actually well, gained. I actually gained uh, my father's business because he was a oh. manager for some multiple houses. So I okay. gained those, uh, I gained his job. So I was, because we own those two property, there's two properties we own. Um, so we're, we have tenants that are living there. So I'm just collecting the, the monthly rents on that, on those. Uh, so we have like oh, a okay. stable uh, uh, financial for, so I took over that. So I have my That's own awesome. team, I have a business manager we, and I just, I just deal with all the ministry stuff, but then they just deal with the tenant problem stuff. So right. I just deal with that. And then part time, I do research uh, for the uh, for a uh, doctor who's a dentist. Uh, he has his own organization in LA where I help him with his program, so I can improve so he can improve his programs for the patients in his area. That's awesome! Wow, De- you're definitely yeah. busy too. Um, yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I so, remember. Yeah. <laughs> A few years ago, when you reached out to me about flipping houses, I think. Oh, yeah. um, so your your property management business right now is it just in California? Yes, in California at the moment. Yes. Okay. But that's my partner who who started it. I didn't. I didn't know nothing about it. Well, a little bit okay. now when I had my business degree now from Cal State Florida, I kind of know right. a little bit what that aspect now. Uh, okay. So. Yeah, and with that aspect, I was able to, you know, it, I, it wasn't that hard. It's just you have to learn all the, the rules based in California to deal with. So I am actually thinking of, well, it, I'm thinking of investing in real estate, but not in California. So I'm looking, I'm looking in Ohio. Uh, Ohio is, yeah. Texas, Ohio, and um, South Dakota is a good one. Yeah, those area, uh, they have pretty yeah. good. <laughs> So uh, according to Bigger Pockets, it, Cleveland, Ohio is one of the top 10 that you uh-huh. can probably collect rent every month and then the property will appreciate. And then uh-huh. the um, barrier to entry is pretty low. I've been seeing some um, houses that are like sixty, seventy thousand dollars 70000 So okay. I am still in the research phase when it comes to uh-huh. the investment. So I'm not fully committed to it yet. And uh, um, we'll see how that goes. 
well, let me give you the story because this actually maybe is a good learning phase because um, right. for those for new people who are trying to invest or trying to flip a house, um, I have an aunt um, right now currently. Um, I'm not going to say her name, but she is, she back then in two, before 2008 of the crash, like mm-hmm. I think one year before, it was a hot case for real estate to buy in Las Vegas. Okay? Right. Because they're, they're buying houses over there because they're building new developments. Um, my aunt was so, I don't know what you call it, having that fever, she bought it three houses over there. Um, yeah, she bought three houses. Um, I think they're already completed, uh, built. And then, you know, you know, with that fever, she wanted to flip it and then have some tennis to go over there. Right. Unfortunately, I don't know what happened, but it crashed and um, she lost her, those three properties, but also her current house in California. Oh, in no. North. And with that, she's living in my other house, which is now she's our tenant. Now basically she pays us um, because she apparently, you know, she lost her current house. Wow. Yeah. She didn't her, recover. Um, well, I mean, she's struggling now to recover, wow. you know. Yeah. Because wow. she, she filed bankruptcy on that. Wow. Yeah. Is it under her name or is it under a business name? It's under her name because um, she also has, because under her current house back then, she has a nursing facility she was doing. Yeah. And she lost her business as well because of that. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Probably all that equity. She, Took out yeah. to pay for the yeah. to make oh, up yeah. for the other houses. Yeah, she did, yeah, she did that. Wow. So that's a that's a lesson to learn. <laughs> okay. Um. So my stepdad, he he flips houses and he's been flipping houses okay. for more than ten years, okay. and he he does really well. Um. He has a house right now that they just tore apart and rebuilding from the ground up in Newport Beach. So okay. I, and he's an engineer and he's doing really well. So that's, see, I'm interested in that. That's why I got my real estate license. Mm-hmm. At first I thought mm-hmm. it's like, oh no, I'm gonna help people buy houses and sell houses. But guess what? If you have a nine to five job, Monday through Friday, it's right. impossible to do it. Right. So I think the thing that attracted me is the business side of it. You know, I want to buy a property. I want to mm-hmm. um, renovate it. I don't necessarily want to flip it in, in means of selling it. I, I want to buy it, renovate it, um, rent, and then refinance the Burr met- method. Okay. Right. So that's, that's what I want to do. Okay. So, but I, I still have to take the first step. So, <laughs> right, right. Well, that's better to do all that research uh, instead of getting the headaches later on. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm, I'm, by the way, I'm sorry about um, what happened to your father. So, um, it, is okay. it through it was, COVID? Yeah, it was unexpected. Okay. Um, I don't know what happened. Um, we don't know if it was the COVID or just something like a preliminary health issue that he had. I don't know. It was just all of a sudden, you know. I just, and it, it sucked because I lost my father right two days before graduation. Wow. So, yeah. So, Sorry it, was, it, it was really hard. So. Yeah. I can imagine. Um, the, so my sister, the one in the interview before, when she mm-hmm. got COVID, she was not able to walk. She was bedridden. And it took her almost a year to fully recover. So wow. she went from bedridden to crawling like a baby to um, walker. And then it was like little by little. It was definitely a hard recovery for her. Right. So, but, you know, thank God that nothing, you know, she didn't pass. She, she you know, still us. So I can't, I can't imagine what you were going through at right. that time. Mm-hmm. So, right. um, so yeah, so back to like I was working um, um, from that. Yeah, I'm uh, sorry. Yeah, you're working. <laughs> um, I also was also because that was um that issue. I was also taking care of my mom part time as a caregiver as well, because yeah. uh, my mom had a stroke back in 2016. So I was also that primary caregiver as well, because I did not want to put her in a nursing care because um, it will you know with nursing care probably because she's under Medicare they will take her money and all that stuff. So. 
right. with that Absolutely. issue. You don't you don't want to do that. So as a loving son, you know your your new role now. You have to be the the father like thing to help your mother. You know to take care of them. Uh, yeah. How is yeah. she doing right now? Oh, she's doing well now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, That's good. That, you know, it was <laughs> it was the worst my in my time. Yeah, um, so absolutely. within this within this phrase, it took me a while to like get back to my room, studying back to get my masters to doing this other masters. You know, it it, it takes a while. Yeah, uh, yeah. Wow. How yeah. young are you, Chris? Huh? What was that? How young are you? I am thirty seven years old. Okay, you're young. Yeah. Thirty seven year young. Yes. Yes. Not old. You're not old. You're young. <laughs> I appreciate. It. <laughs> you still look young, so you're yeah, you know, it's all good. Thanks. I get that a lot. Yeah. So yeah, if people it. say that, then I still know. <laughs> um, it's, it's funny because people, even my my other extended family, they tell me, "You're at this age. How come you're not, you know, married or you're, you know, how come you're not in your career?" Well, life happens. There's there are things you don't even know. You haven't dealt with that in your life, right? So, yeah. You know? Yeah. So I mean, you. Just, you know, you know how Philippines are, they're just most so, you know what I mean? <laughs> they, oh my gosh, you don't. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, he, um, I, I just learned a new term yesterday from my uncle. I'm actually going to meet him after this. Um, he came from the Philippines. Uh -huh. So he said the term is marites, mm -hmm. which is, right. those are the ladies who are, oh yeah, <laughs> who gossips, who gossips a lot. Yeah. So, um, I mean, yeah, I mean, you, you've gone through a lot of things that, no one has, especially at your, um, your age at that time, you know, 2016, mm -hmm. your mom had a stroke and then your dad passing away mm -hmm. in 2020. Mm -hmm. So how are you doing? So your mom is doing well, but how are you doing? I'm doing fine. I mean, of course, I, I, I also went to my own therapy as well. It was not easy. <laughs> yeah. just, even if you have family trying to help you, whatever, no, you need your own therapy to, you know, get through all this. Uh, all yeah, this BSN, yeah. you know, all that, all that thing you, have, you have done, you know, because uh, yeah. you, you, you can't do it so, you can't do so much and be like, oh, I'm doing okay. I'm just moving on. You know what I mean? No, you, you need to talk to someone, you know, to vent, you know, so you don't go to that dark side of suicide or, you know, because I have yeah. those, I have those thinking, you know what I mean? Uh, but, you know, um, you know, going through that therapy, whatever, it helps a lot. Yeah. With that. One advice that my sister said that, you know, before it's everyone has their own life, right? A path of life. Mm -hmm. um, you can start school early, which majority of people are doing, or you mm -hmm. can, you know, start school a little later. Mm -hmm. But it becomes a lot easier when you try to straighten your life first before going back to school, your oh. family relationship, maybe finances and all those other stuff. Because if you're at school, you won't be able to focus focus right. in school. No, totally you're going right. to be thinking about your family, your relationships, mm -hmm. your right. finances. Right. So uh, I'm glad you're doing okay, and then now you're getting back at it, uh, right. going back to you know your dream of becoming a dentist. Uh -huh. So, right. and hey, you don't have a biological clock, Chris. Okay. Oh no, no. Women, totally. women have biological clocks. <laughs> yes, you don't have a biological <laughs> clock. You're okay. <laughs> well, because my my I have family who are very I don't know. I would say some side of my family are educated and some are not. So the mm -hmm. the ones that are not educated, they don't understand that. But the education mm -hmm. one, those educated ones, they understand. Yeah, absolutely. Like, um, yeah. but you know, you just have to just you know, yeah, yeah, I'll, I listen, but you know, just. <laughs> Just, you know, just <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the you uncle know. that I, the uncle that I'm going to meet in a bit, he is he's been married now for three years, and he's in his early forties. So okay. no rush, Chris. Oh, Absolutely yeah. no rush. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You're still okay. Yes. All right. So now you are in Boston. Right, Boston University is that what it is? Yes. For your um, one year masters, and are you at the start of your masters or yeah, middle I, of it? Just started last week. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I started July twenty nine. July twenty nine. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 
Is that a special program where they'll help you get into a dental school or a direct route to dental school? You could, yeah. It will. They, they're, they're saying that ninety percent of students who did this program will get accepted dental school. Or okay. Either, even if the the school that you did your master's, which is right now at Boston, you will get in. Um, and plus, you the the because you're cause so right now I'm taking is like biochemistry and uh, physiology. Okay. And that you're you're sitting next to the dental students, um, the year one dental students, which is nice, pretty much. Um, and with that, once you take those, and then the other courses, the some courses that are with the dental students, you complete that, um, and then do your DAT if you need to do redo the DAT or not yet. If you have to do that, and then reapply, then they will give you that uh, acceptance. Hopefully, so if you okay. do well in the masters. Wow. And I'm sure that's full time right now. Is that it correct? Is full-time, yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, I considering a one year master's it seems pretty cramped. So, yes. Yes. Yeah. It is. It is. Wow. So finance wise, how are you able to afford, you know, your two masters, going to dental school, etc. Yeah, sure. So the reason why is because I have a loving mother who cares of my education. She takes education very seriously. Because yeah. uh, my mom has a BS and RN, um, so with that, she, uh, her so early end of the beginning of my career when, during high school, when I graduated, uh, yeah, when I finished uh, high school, she told me, "I am here to help you all the way. Uh, whatever dreams you want to do, I will pay for your tuition." Because wow. my mom's a hard worker, so yeah. she works a lot of hours. So because of that, she I got through Cal State Fullerton, no loans, master, wow. I went to my yeah. master's degree for in Arizona at AT Stone University. No loans, paid, paid thoroughly, and then this one is going to be paid thoroughly as well. Wow, that's awesome! Yeah, that's a loving mother right there, and she's yeah. working hard. So, yeah. and I'm a good wow. son. So I don't absolutely. I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't cause her any trouble over the years. That's so good. that's yeah. the reason why I get this reward. Yeah, it seems like yeah. I mean, your mom definitely took care of you and raised you to be a good son. And that definitely showed when your mom needed your help. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. now your mom is doing well. She's still helping you right now. Yeah. So you can you can yes. finish and make your dreams come true. Yeah. So that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so besides that, what do you have an emergency fund? I do. Um, I do. Yeah. I have called a sinking fund. A sinking fund. Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. I also have some dividends that I inherit from my father. So it's really nice yeah. because I get those monthly <laughs> dividends, royalties, and it's pretty nice. So it's, it's, okay. just, it's, like, it's like a pension to me, an early pension. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I have no problem with those uh, with groceries and, you know, mm-hmm. um, rent. Yeah. That definitely helps. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That so, helps. so with Dave, according to Dave Ramsey, baby step number one is your sinking fund at least $1,000. Oh, it's more than that. <laughs> okay. I just want to make sure, you know, it's like, that's step one. <laughs> more than that. <laughs> yeah. So, and then no loans. So that's great. And then no. you have a, um, at least a three to six month sinking fund. Yes, I do. Okay. Perfect. You know, Dave Ramsey is going to be very proud of you. <laughs> so what, what are your thoughts about Dave Ramsey, by the way? So Dave Ramsey is all about cash is king. No loans, no debt whatsoever. I, I totally understand his uh, mythology on the new loans, but you know, everyone, mm-hmm. everyone has to do loans, especially in our in my case. I have to do a loan later eventually. Right. Um, um, but you got to be smart in what kind of loan you're going to be taking, what kind of lender you're going to be taking it from, and what type mm-hmm. of how many percentage of the interest rates you're going to be paying per month. You know, so you got to think about that um, before. Um, because later on, if you're going to refinance with another vendor, um, lender, okay, what is this better for me? So I can pay it off quickly um, once you are done with the program and then pay it off quickly, quickly enough. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay, so the other end of the spectrum from Dave Ramsey is uh, Robert Kiyosaki, which he's all about borrow money 100%, buy asset producing, uh, buy income producing assets and then use that money to buy your stuff. So basically he's like 100% debt. Mm-hmm. Are, are you also 100% debt or are you somewhere in the middle? 
it depends if you're in that motion. Um, you got to see if it's going to work uh, first before you initiate that that dip. Um, because I'm not in that I'm not in that uh, in that place right now. You know, mm-hmm. so eventually, if I will, like, because for dental school, once you once you have that depth in dental school, after dental school, you're gonna have to pay that quickly. Or it's already starting to accumulate. You have to pay that. Only yeah. that for dentists, in our position, you're gonna have to open a practice because that's just how it is in our profession. You're gonna be a bis- You're gonna have to have that. So you're gonna have mm-hmm. to open a business loan as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you're gonna have to decide how you're going to, you know. How much step you're gonna need? Are you gonna do that first, or are you gonna work as an associate first, and then pay off your your tuition all the way first, and then you know open the bis- uh, open business loans so, you, so that you could have enough of that to you know buy your equipment, um, your chairs on the, in that office, the rent, you know whatever that wherever you're gonna be practicing. Right, and they're not cheap. Oh, no, they're not cheap. No, they're expensive. No. Those really. things are expensive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how much? I'm not too familiar with dental school. How much is dental school? So depending, um, if you're for like the cheapest one right now is at UCLA, I believe it's 300 to 400 grand around there. To the most expensive one at Midwestern in Arizona is seven, I believe seven, almost 700 grand. The most expensive one is New York, New, uh, New York University. It's a real plus, 700 plus over there. This is more expensive than medical school. Oh yeah, oh, I did yeah. not realize that. Yeah, yeah. What? Well, okay, so four years of dental school, uh, and that's the so problem. Like... That's the problem going on now because people are saying it feels like more like the it's become more of a scandal because now why are we getting pay um not pay but why are we getting tuition that's so high now that it's just that you're not the pay the, the and, and and what is it? A yearly salary for a dentist is usually like up to hundred fifty thousand to I don't know, depends on where you're, you're practicing in what area, but up to two hundred thousand or three hundred thousand. But it's still not enough, especially with yeah. that investment of paying that tuition that's so much. Yeah. So, I mean, I, what we got is you just have to decide which is the best. If you're going to go to an expensive dental school, you better make sure that they give you the best clinical uh, experience you can get, so that you know. It'll be the best dentist you can you can be. Which I I was going to ask you. So after four years of dental school, how much will be you? How much will you be making right after dental school? Like your again, first year again? Because my plan is I'm gonna do it in associateship because I have no choice. I you have to, I can't open a practice. It's just way too much. Right. So yeah. you're gonna have to start you know working with another dentist, and so you probably it depends on the contract with the work because you'll be doing. When you're doing an associate, you have to be in contract with another dentist based on how much uh, collections with each patient you're going to be you're going to be treating. So it right. just depends, maybe one hundred fifty thousand to two hundred thousand. Okay. On that on when your you first start. year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, but still, your debt to income ratio right. is a big. There's a huge gap. Again, yeah. it's the same thing as medical school. Right, mm-hmm. you your medical school you can owe somewhere between two hundred fifty thousand to five hundred thousand. It well, all let's depends say, where. Let's say any doctoral program. I mean, it's yeah. it's 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 going to be the same or whatever around there. Okay, because so as soon as you finish your medical school, you you're working as a resident, and you'll be making sixty to seventy thousand dollars a year, which is just enough for your living. But not enough to pay off your loans yet. Mm. That's that's pretty scary to me. Mm-hmm. Um, it's funny because I mentioned our one of our colleagues who is now um, a paid doctor in Chalk. You should interview right. him because it will be an interesting how he's being paid on his second year residency there. Oh, he's in se- he's his second year. Yeah, yeah. At Chalk. Okay, I'll reach yeah. out to him. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I have Ryan again in two weeks. It's his first year. As a um, okay. resident, see that alone. The finances already scares me. But right. like you said, you know, if this is what you want to do, don't look at the finances. Right. No, you know, totally. I'm sure eventually you'll be able to pay it all off, oh, yeah. and not only be able to pay it off, but you can probably do a lot more than just paying it off. What people so, don't know, that, what people don't don't know is that my mother has has set me up a trust fund, so okay. it's already been set. So even if um, 
for God for God forgives if my mother's no longer here. I'm right. already right. situated that I'm already protected. Right. Regardless. Even if I have a a uh, dental school loan or whatever, I will be paid off uh, probably less than five years. Right. Yeah. Your mom is so smart. It mm -hmm. seems like she already has all the structures you know, uh, yeah. in place. Yeah. Man, yeah. I, I want to be your mom. So I'm <laughs> thinking also like making a trust fund and then mm -hmm. making all my different mm -hmm. businesses as an LLC. Mm -hmm. And then of course my kids and mm -hmm. grandchildren, hopefully. I also have my own trust fund for my sister, just in case I something happens to me. Just in okay. case. But right. that can change if I get married later on, you know, just. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the reason why so, you gotta have that situation. Not many people don't have that thinking about trust yeah. funds or whatever. And I've heard a lot of stories when people like their own, their parents are passed away or whatever, they're in trouble because now they have to do probate. Yes. And that's yes. And I've been through probate as well because one of my father's assets was in a probate and that's oh. for two years. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. He didn't oh. put his name on some, like my mom's name or, or, or my name or my sister's name. It was stuck in a in a, in which we have to do a probate, which we have to pay thirteen grand for a lawyer for the for for, for doing that. Wow! And that takes a two year process. Wow! Is it still? Yeah. Oh no, it's that's done then. It's done. You, it's done. Okay. Yeah, but that process, my God, there was a lot of signatures. You have to go to the court just to hear it. What's going on in that? You know? Yeah, it's a long yeah. process. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Yeah. I mean. That definitely is worth for you to get into that loan, into that debt, um, knowing that you have something backing you up mm -hmm. um, just to pursue something, what you love. Mm -hmm. Wow. Your yeah. parents are great, by the way. I don't know if I've said it before, but your parents <laughs> are that great. Awesome. That awesome. Because uh, not many parents are not like that, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they, don't, they don't even think like, in yeah, even let's go further. Even my parents have extra plots of uh, uh, burial uh, at a local cemetery, which I'm set as well. If I pass away, it's already paid off already. So I don't have to worry about my parents pass away. It's already paid off. Yeah, I just paid the casket. That's it. And that's that's not <laughs> So, yeah. So it's already full cool set. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's I know, awesome. I know, it's, I know it's kind of a off topic, but you know. You get the idea of that package of, uh, of on that area. Okay. Uh, I don't think I don't think it's off topic, and that would still be considered as finances. I right. actually know someone who's a burial agent, and mm -hmm. he wrote a couple books. Um, one of the books he wrote is that technically, um, but my mindset is the same thing as your parents, which is you know what I don't have kids, but I want to set up a five twenty nine plan when okay. I have kids. I right. want to make sure that if I die early, Jessica and I will be ready and my kids wouldn't have to think, oh my gosh, how are we going to pay for my, for, for our parents, you know, burial and such. Right, 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 right. Because that's not, that's not the responsibility of my future kids. That's my right. own responsibility. Right, right. And I don't right. want to give them that headache. Right. Um, and I'm hoping, Chris, um, Dave Ramsey has another book called Leaving a Legacy, I think, or Legacy. Yeah. Yes, yes, um, I heard Okay. Yeah. And hopefully, I think from what I'm observing right now, you have that same mindset where, mm -hmm. you know, when you have your future kids, you would have something set up for them early on, right. just in no, case yeah. something happens to you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh, man. That's, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Cause not many, <laughs> like my, my, like myself, maybe if you ask someone like another person, their finance, you have no idea where to start. Yeah, yeah uh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, especially you know, for me, because I'm always thinking about money, <laughs> not only money, but like how to be cheap as well. Like, like Grand Steph, it was cheap as well, but in a smart way. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's how yeah. I'm also. I don't, I don't need I, I, I cook my meals. I also drink coffee just by buying it in the stores. I don't buy Starbucks. Mm -hmm. I can do all that stuff. The same thing. Because <laughs> um, back then when I was young, I always wanted all these stuff or whatever, but my mom always told me, why do you need that? You know, it's just mm. unnecessary stuff. Get this generic stuff. It will help you no matter what, you know, right. and when you're young, you, you still don't believe in that. But when you grow up, you're like, oh, that makes sense now. Yeah. 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 You know I mean? <laughs> and I'm glad we developed that habit and character because like you said, in, in the generation that we live in, it's 
a lot of materialistic and mm -hmm. I, 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 you know, it's mm -hmm. like, I want this, I want that. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of, you know, self-centeredness in there that they don't think about their future generation or other people. So your parents definitely raised a good son. No, I've been mentioning it, but it's just for my observation. Oh, no, no, I, so, I appreciate it. I get that from a lot of people as well. So you're not the only one. <laughs> so besides, I'm basically like a role model, basically already. So to a lot of people, you are, you definitely are. Um, are you in Boston right now? Yes, I am. Oh, okay. All right. I thought you, so when did you move there? Just last week? I moved there two weeks ago. Oh, two weeks ago. Okay. I have when a you family, started. What's fun is that I have a family member here two months away from Boston University. But their kid okay. already moved out and is now at NYU. So they were willing to meet to, you know, for one year, but I just have to pay for the the room stay. So just only for only five hundred dollars only for the rent. And so I think it's good. I'm going to do that instead of seventeen hundred dollars for this or two thousand for that rent. So I'm like, I'll just pay you five hundred dollars if that's okay with you. And they're like, Yeah, that's fine. Absolutely. <laughs> so, it's smart. <laughs> so, so I decided to stay there instead of a apartment. So I stay in their place. That's awesome. Um, so besides your, um, I know you had a great, you have a great relationship with your mom and you had a great relationship with your dad. Um, any other relationships that you have that's close, best friends, girlfriend, any form of other relationships? Well, uh, just friends uh, in general. I do try to keep up with friends. Um, unfortunately, everyone's lives are all busy. Um, right. I try to just, you know, text them, hey, how are you? How's everything? Hope you're doing good. If you, if you're free, whatever, you want to go grab a bite and whatever, and catch up, and that'll be great. That'll be great. If not, we'll maybe just catch up on texting one and see how you're doing later on. You know what I mean? That's, mm -hmm. what, that's usually how I do to my colleagues and friends. Right. I just like Mohammed, I just recently did that, and he said he was oh, in cool. second year. Um, unfortunately, everyone is busy or because they're married, so it's different. The situation yeah. means. So you can't really hang them, hang them because the you're going to be a third wheeler with them if you yeah. if you bring their uh, significant other. Um, um, otherwise, uh, relationship like if it's like a, like a partner. Uh, right now, I'm not in a relationship uh, because I'm just too darn busy in my life. Um, right. um, I'm, I'm maybe hopefully maybe godly one day um, there will be someone in my life. Probably maybe in dental school maybe when I go into dental school. Or maybe after mm -hmm. dental school, who knows? It just depends on God who will provide me that one day. Right. I yeah. mean, I truly believe in that. Um, but I think God has me put in a situation where I have a lot of things to do and then it needs to be done before I can go to that, the next stage on that. My life. I agree. Yeah. And, and you're a man and you, you said, you know, when God provides it and usually, well, not, I don't want to say usually, but God requires for a man to be a provider so mm -hmm. and i'm certain like you said you know maybe you'll meet someone in dental school or someone out there hopefully who understands your busy schedule right. and how it is going to be when you become a dentist because your schedule is going to be totally different All right so someone right. who understands you mm -hmm. and i think um, i'm sure god has a has a purpose and has a plan for you when it comes to that aspect or I'm when it comes sure. to that relationship. Sure. So, mm -hmm. so speaking of which, um, you, you, I know you mentioned, you know, God willing and, and such. Do, do you have a personal relationship with God? Um, I, when I need him, I need him. Uh, if I need to like a prayer that in a situation that I need, I do pray. And I, and I, I do get out my, my, my verses and my, my Bible. And if I need mm -hmm. to pray, with God in the corner, yeah, I would I would reach out to him, um, what I need, um, mm -hmm. um, because with my busy schedule, I can't just go to a church every Sunday all the time, right. um, uh, because of course my mom is disabled left side, I yeah. cannot just go to church every Sunday. So we, me and my mom, we always do these um, online churches. That are from, I think Crystal Cathedral have that type of session. Mm -hmm. We usually just tune in online and then we just pray uh, with live session. I see. Yeah. Um, and um, some other church from other states that this catalog that does their own online session. So we just do that. So I'm just follow on. Okay. Okay. 
uh, since you just moved and you're in a different area, mm-hmm. then it's it's probably unfamiliar, you know, yeah. what's around you. Mm-hmm. And again, your schedule com- just completely changed because of your master's program. Right. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I completely understand that busy schedule. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. professionally in a professional mm-hmm. manner so you know other people can also see hey it's okay if you are a little behind it's okay it doesn't matter what your age is right if mm-hmm. you want to go this path go for it so right. i've been mentoring right. kids there's a second year college student who i got an inter who i helped get an internship at the same research hospital that i'm in okay. and funny. he's been doing really well So he probably has only taken one biology class, but he wants to do an MD, PhD. He wants, he wants to do a lot of things and I'm, I'm happy for him. So I was like, okay, let's skip the mistakes and let's put you in the right path. (laughs) Right. Right. So it's a long path, but you know, just it's a long path. path. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Definitely MD, PhD. Yeah. Uh, Okay. So if someone does reach, want to reach out to you and go into that dental route, um, are you open into helping them? Of course, whatever time oh, yeah. you have. Almost, okay. almost definitely. Uh, okay. I, I usually want to go back to trusted foreign, maybe whoever's pressing in or whatever. I'll just be like their liaison or whatever and just, you know, right. get in that pathway, speak to it. Um, yeah. um, because I just want to get every, every pre-dance, um, like I did when I was a pre-dance, that opportunity because nobody didn't, pe- no one doesn't help you, especially advisors. Sometimes they put you in the wrong path and I hate that. Yeah. Yep. You know, they, they see hundreds of students. So there's no way there's like, you know, they try to like, oh, here's the general guideline mm-hmm. and they give that to you. It's not but personalized you know, you know, for the path. I know it's not personal, but they also like, put you down like, oh, you're not going to get to this, blah, blah, blah. Yes. That's why <sighs> I hate that. That's why yeah. I created my own class. I said, no more of that crap bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> I did that yeah. and look at everyone and they got excited to dental school. So I'm not going to be dealing with these uh, advisors yeah. or whatever. And I'm, I'm just going to do it my own way. Yeah, yep, absolutely. So yeah. where can students reach out to you? Instagram, yeah, if, email. Yeah, if they want to reach out to me, they can uh, reach out to me on my Instagram, which is CFNANO. Or you can check out my professional one, which I'll be updating that more once I get to dental school, which is Nanotooth Chronicles at Instagram. Oh, oh that's awesome. And then, <laughs> and then once I, maybe eventually when I become a dentist, I'll probably have my own YouTube channel for podcasts that are on awesome. the line when I have a multi corporation or something later, <laughs> later, <laughs> later on. Once I'm not successful later. <laughs> Absolutely. Any last words? Let's say um, a student is watching this right now. Any last words for them or tips when it comes to going yeah. into the field that you're in? Yeah. Whatever uh, profession you're trying to aim for, take it of a great, uh, take it of a grain of salt. Uh, not to, um, you know, first of all, enjoy the journey. It's what if it's if it's going to get you there quickly, great. If not, you know, it's okay. It's everyone's struggling. No one's perfect. Mm-hmm. Everyone has their own clock on how to get in. Eventually, you will get into whatever program you're going to get in, and then, and then once you graduate, people just the patient is just going to see you as doc. Okay, mm-hmm. tell me treat this. That's it. They're not going to. Yeah. T- they're not. They're not going to care what school you go to. They're not going to mm-hmm. care. Oh, you have A's and B's or whatever. Uh, you're just going to be getting your license, and basically, you're going to be treating that patient. Uh, mm-hmm. And just be humble. Stay humble. You know, and just you know be able to, you know, just please your patients so that they can get better. Absolutely. I completely agree. Well, well, thank you so much, Chris, for um, taking your time. I know you just started the program yeah, um, yeah. to, you know, catch up and talk to me and hopefully also inspire other people out there. And thank you. I, yeah, I don't know no, what no. else to say. <laughs> I'm more, I'm more than happy to help, um, especially if they want. If people want to reach out to me, I, mean, I have no problem. I just got to set up a, a time when I'm not busy because I'm always yep. busy. But you know, I'm all, I'm always that person that needs if someone needs to be talking. Yeah, I'm more yeah. than I'm more than happy. Agree. Okay.